What's up, YouTube? Today I wanted to ask everyone out there how you're feeling about your stack and what you would do differently knowing what you know now. But before we get started, I wanted to take a moment and say thank you to everyone who purchased an IKEA Cube for me and also downloaded the app. I'll talk more about that a little bit later, but just wanted to start off with a thank you. So as everyone might have noticed, Spot took a big jump off a cliff and decided to drop significantly. Gold took a tumble down to about 1265 and silver down to about 1760. With Spot dropping, the price of bullion has dropped with it. And with that, that's why I started off asking the question, how do you feel about your stack? Some of you newer stackers might think that the rug just got pulled out from under you and caught you off guard, whereas some others of you might be thankful for the floor dropping and ready to pick up some more. Those of you who started in the $20 range might be feeling a little anxious right now, and I wanted to bring a couple of bars out that I bought in the $20 range or time frame. And here is where you can see two common bars. One is an Engelhard and one is a Silvertown. I picked one up for 210, I picked the other one for 230. Now that you know the price for both of them, which one do you think was affected more by spot dropping? Here's an example of a proof 2016 Libertad PF70. And how much do you think this one was affected by the spot drop? I'll give you a hint. It wasn't. Speaking of spot, that spot on the case is not actually on the coin. I'm trying to rub it off, but uh, luckily it's on the case. So the main thing is with semi-numismatics or numismatics, you're a little bit more protected than you are with bullion. And that's what I wanted to discuss this time. Because depending on how you feel about your stack is really how you should probably build your stack. If you're comfortable with spot dropping a dollar or two or three, then, you know, by all means, just go ahead and purchase bullion. But if it makes you feel uncomfortable that your stack has taken a huge hit, then you might want to look into something that might actually preserve itself. That would point you to a little bit more higher premium, but that premium is considered more of insurance. When it comes to bullion and spot dropping this quickly, it really shows the resiliency of your stack and how well you've diversified your portfolio. And it's, it can be physical portfolio or stock portfolio, whatever. But either way, when something drops dramatically, you can see how well you're able to take the drop. And if you're 100% in bullion, you can take this time to either acquire more bullion or kind of panic or readjust your stack. Let's take the Silver Eagle, for example. Not too long ago, it was selling for $2.50 over spot. At 19, would put it at about $22.50, and now it's roughly $20. So within only a day or two, it's dropped 10%. Now let's take a look at this 2013 Perth Mint Koala with Chinese Privy. This particular coin is fairly difficult to find on the market in ms69 or just in any grade it's just hard to get and was going for approximately 165 we also have the 2014 and here's a 1955 ms64 bugs bunny 50 cent franklin uh, the reason why i'm showing these 50 cent pieces are is because these are more numismatic pieces where the bugs bunny itself so it being a variety is worth about 80 bucks the common theme being graded and government issue. Now let's take a look at non-government issue. These are just some regular port bars and also a non-fiat metal. In, in essence, they're all non-fiat, but uh, uh, we'll separate the round from the bars. So I've used this metal as an example in the past and I'm gonna use it again. This is copper and brass. And right beside it is a 1964 BU penny. Uh, but one thing I wanted to mention is that copper ends up usually tarnishing over time. And there are a few separate variations depending on how you care for it. So if you decide to buy numismatics or metals that are made of a certain material, you should understand how they age and take care of them appropriately. 
because it can affect the value tremendously. The difference between a, a penny BN versus a red RD is huge. So now looking at some semi numi coins, a, a colored coin versus a regular government issue coin. And uh, how do you think this did against bullion? This particular one is a half ounce versus a regular piece. So there's semi numi bullion and the carded semi numi bullion. And of course you have your standard rounds. These are some old school vintage rounds that I got from my folks. And uh, here's a one-off yearly pour by y YPS, Jaeger Port Silver. So depending on how you diversify your stack is really gonna make you feel comfortable with your stack or make you feel like you need to change a few things. And uh, of course, here's my little cube. When it comes to fiat versus non-fiat, it really there is really no difference. The the only difference is the number and the government issue, which in itself has some value because if you believe in sovereign nations, then that in itself is worth a little bit of something. Otherwise, YPS is its own boutique shop. You have the Nanjing metal, which I made a mistake before. I said it was made by Shenyang, but really it's Nanjing. What's important is if people really like what they're purchasing, because if they don't like it, ultimately it dies anyway. There are things that trend, there are things that are popular, and there are things that people just want to have. So it, it really doesn't matter if the government issues it or not. Like, for example, the Nui coins or, or what was it, the Fiji coins, I have no real interest in those, but to me, those kinds of things where they just needed the queen on one side, it, they probably would have been better off with a nice design. Anyways, I'm digressing a little bit. The main point is the design and the demand are what keep the value, and not so much the government. Now, all the government does is just provide a sense of trust that there's a standard held behind it. Most maples will have a similar design. Uh, most American products, U.S. mint products, will have a certain style to it. No matter how you're organizing your stack, you're always making a little bit of a trade-off. When you have a little bit more preservation, you give up a little bit of liquidity and vice versa. So it's just one of those things where you have to find what's comfortable for you.